Hello everyone and welcome back to another high level match of StarCraft 2. Today it's time for a best of three series of Zerg versus Terran. All of these games are going to be played on the new maps. Game number one is on a map called Altitude that got second overall in the Team Liquid map contest. I haven't actually casted a game on this map just yet, so I'm excited to find out exactly what ended up going down in this particular series. Now first off, in the top right hand corner of the map, playing here with the blue Zerg drones, we have the man who's been making Zerg build orders interesting again, because we're looking at Mio Maika's main hatchery. I casted a couple of games of Mio Micah going up against Protoss, and let's just say that he plays differently than everybody else out there. <sighs> I hope that he does that as well against uh, against Terran, because it's been a long time. Oh, all right, there we go. We've got a 17 pool, I think is what that is. Anyways, it's been a long time since I've last seen a game of uh, Zerk versus Terran that he played, so... Let's find out together exactly what ended up going down in this particular series, because his opponent, in the opposite corner, one of the very best European macro Terrans, with the red SCVs, we're looking at Spirit's main comment center. Now, I had a cheeky little look at the replay duration for this particular series, and let's just say that the games are rather short. So I've got a feeling that Mio Maika is going to do something spicy. Because Spirit is very much so the kind of guy who's happy to play a half hour long Zerg versus Terran if he can, okay? He'll be putting down command centers even after he's already won the game 10 minutes ago. Okay, maybe that's a little bit of an exaggeration. But there's no denying that Spirit definitely likes to play a more passive approach. Game number one, it's on a map called Altitude. This map got second at the Team Liquid map contest overall, so that's really quite impressive. I think, though, I had, I had a look at it in my initial impressions video, and I thought this map was really cool, but it didn't look as, as cool as some of the other maps, right? So the overall map layout seems decent. Nothing all too spicy. Here's, though, why I think it got a lot of votes before this game really gets underway, right? So we've got a, a pool into a hatchery and a gas geyser. He's probably not going to pull out a gas, is he? We'll find out in just a moment. Okay, anyways, here's the situation on this map. And this is why I think it got a lot of votes. So there is a base, obviously it's mirrored. There's a base, two bases, with eight golden mineral fields. However, there's a watchtower where you would actually need to build your main structure, right? So here's what you can do. You can sit at the watchtower and get some vision. You can then destroy the cooling tower, which actually collapses on top of the Zelnaga watchtower, destroying it. Then you can destroy the rocks that the cooling tower leaves behind. And then eventually you can finally mine this base. <laughs> I mean, it's a really cool idea. But I've got a feeling it's one of those things that, like... We're all desperately waiting to happen, and then it never does. Because there are so many other bases that you can also take, right? Like, there's so many expansions. But maybe. Maybe. Maybe it's something we are going to see. I mean, if Bly was playing in this game, I've got a feeling that we'd be seeing it pretty quickly. Anyhow. Once again, Mio Mika leaving the drones in the gas geyser. So, the Zerg versus Terran meta is incredibly well established, right? Here's what Zerg players do. They make a lot of queens, usually seven or eight. They make a lot of drones, usually on three hatcheries, you want to get to maximum saturation as quickly as possible. And because of that, all of those early game things, they only require minerals, you pull out of gas. This already makes me so uncomfortable right now, he's at 44 supply block, we've got ourselves 200 gas, what are we gonna do with 200 gas? Well apparently, even though the lair only costs 100 gas, that is what we're starting up right now. Mio Mika apparently played a lot of, uh, he played a lot of Brute War. I don't know if he still does, but he played a lot of StarCraft 1 back in the day. And it really shows in the way that he's playing this game as well. At least in the, um, the other games that I've seen him go for a lot of, like he basically was playing only Brute War units when you think about it. He was very fond of Zerklings, very fond of Hydras, but he didn't go for that many Banelings. And well, I guess Roaches and Ravagers is what we saw him play as well. So they're not exclusively StarCraft 1 units, but it's a very Brute War-y style where you don't really focus on as much economy. Like StarCraft 2 is very much so a game that's usually determined, like the winner is usually determined by the guy with the better economy. He very much so goes for a variety of unit compositions, and he tries to out-trick his opponent and catch them off guard. So now a group of Zerklings, running in multiple pathways towards the other side of the map. At this point in the game though, double engineering bay here at the front, it's going to create a beautiful wall off, and there's no way with a siege tank in position that that is going to work out. I mean, he decides to go for a very quick spire, but only three gases here. <laughs> <laughs> so, one of the reasons why we see players going for a quick spire is because they can actually get a lot of gas going as well, right? 
In this case, we've got a pretty decent economy, but we don't quite have enough economy yet to actually mine those six Vespian geysers here. Meaning that Miomica is going to be able to produce like a handful of mutas, but really not that many, right? Although I say that, he's completely skipped any Evo chambers, he's completely skipped any Baneling Nest, no Roche Warren, nothing along those lines whatsoever. We've got three gas muta openers? Is that what we're seeing? So this is kind of what I was mentioning earlier. Normally we see Zorkling upgrades, Baneling upgrades, and, well, a whole lot of those units before we ever see a Spire going down. This is five and a half minutes into the game. Mutas are gonna be out at, like, six. So, eight of them, right? There we go. Okay. He did prepare a couple of Overlords in advance. Smashes the Vespian Geyser piggy bank. I've got a feeling you could have afforded a fourth gas, uh, Emil Mike. I feel like more Vespian would have been nice. Anyhow, now we're going into double Evo. Still no Baneling Nest? Okay, so essentially every Zerg build order against Terran right now, specifically Terran Bio, is built around getting Baneling Speed as quickly as you reasonably can. So you really do need Baneling Speed by the time that the Terran goes for a timing attack. Because without Baneling Speed, Terran can technically micro against Zerglings all day, every day, and obviously the Metavex can keep those units alive quite nicely. Spirito not really going for a timing-oriented strategy here, just playing that macro game that he's very, very fond of. He doesn't know about the Mutas, but he's gonna find out. Like, he hasn't seen much of anything. He's seen the timing of the third, though, and because of that, he did go for a missile turret. One siege tank over here gets picked off right away. That's nice, I suppose, but I really like that he made all of these blind missile turrets, yeah. He didn't know what he was going up against precisely, but he knew that it wasn't quite right. That is not ideal. No, that's not very good at all. Anyways, in the meantime, though, we do also have a big Zerkling counterattack. Plus one, plus one is coming up. Still no Baneling Nest. <laughs> it is a very Brute war -y style. I mean, Banelings didn't exist in StarCraft 1. I guess you had, you know, flying Banelings, right? You had Scourge. That's, that's nice and all, but... Not quite the same thing. How many Queens does he have? Only four. In a lot of ways, this kind of reminds me of early days Wings of Liberty. Very cool. Okay. I mean, we could be working on the cooling tower. We could be destroying the watchtowers. I'm just saying, okay, these Zerklings are just sort of camping out in the middle of the map. Wouldn't mind seeing them go after some of these collapsible cooling towers, but... Plus two coming up already, though. For Spirit. He lost a little bit, sure, but honestly, not that much. I'm a little bit concerned for when Spirit goes for an attack. Generally speaking, we'll see Terrans going for an all-out assault as soon as 2-2 finishes. Spirit is going to be pretty much maxed out by the time that he gets there. Unless Mio Micah decides to go for another attack. There's finally the mailing nest. Okay. There is going to be an awful lot of Terran. So even though I think it's cool what Mio Micah is doing here, I am not 100% convinced that it's going to be working out particularly well for him. Well, I guess we're going to find out. Yeah, that Metavec drop is attempted. But that's not gonna happen. That's obviously the advantage of getting quick mutas out if you have your overlords in good positions. We're really missing one over here. But if you have your overlords in good positions, you're gonna have a hard time getting much done when it comes to uh, sending a medevac full of units towards the other side of the map because the mutas are always gonna be able to intercept that pretty easily. Well, he's gonna try again. Well, he killed the overlord now, okay. One medevac boosting away. Trying his best to kill as many of the Metavex here as possible. Now a lot of the uh, Marines coming on running over in this direction as well. And somehow that Metavex is still way too close. No idea what that Metavex pilot was doing. Probably on a control group with the other Metavex or something. I'm not exactly sure what went down there. He was trying to pull it back a couple times. Maybe even an old army hotkey? Although I find that a little hard to believe. Anyhow, Spirit cleverly not going for a timing oriented style by the way. He saw the timing of his opponent's third base, and if you know the timing of your opponent's third base, why would you be going for, you know, an attack, right? Like, if you if you see that your opponent is not making a third base, there's a very good chance they're just simply going to be making a lot of units. And that was indeed the case. Spirit taking minimal damage. Bailing speed still not done, by the way. Nearly 10 minutes into this game. This is when 2-2 is done. Spirit is maxed. He's left some reinforcements behind as well. 
Spirit is in an excellent position right here to just start overwhelming this. Good luck trying to clean up those Marines and all of those siege tanks without bailing speed. Anyways, it is going to finish in about eh, half a minute or so from now. That is certainly going to be after this fourth hatchery dies, though. Spirit cleverly leaving little groups of Marines, little packs of units around as well, just to make sure that the Mutas can be pushed back in case they decide to jump on top of the tank. But yeah, he now decides to go a little bit deeper onto the creep. 18 additional banelings coming up, though. It's going to be 50 banelings here in just a moment. Double medevac drop towards the main base. Creep tumors over here destroyed as well. It's going to take a little bit longer before those are done. Before, like, the creep actually dissipates. One tank getting very ambitious. Not exactly sure what it's doing. Medevac drop in the main base actually going after the spawning pool itself. There's a little medevac drop over here as well at the third base. And honestly, this does not seem like a particularly... Oh my god, well, maybe the Banelings can change the tide of this battle? I mean, the majority of the Terran units here are cleaned up. But the problem is, Zerk has lost a ton of eco. And it's not like Spirit is just sitting back and doing nothing on the back of this, right? He's just, he's just still making stuff at home. As a matter of fact, his fourth command center is done. It's morphed into a planetary fortress. There's another command center building in the main base. Even the lair goes down. Got vehicle weapons level one finishing up for the siege tanks. I mean, I don't even really know if we need that. The main problem, I guess, for Terran right now is dealing with the Zerg counterattack. But if you look at the natural, I think there's going to be plenty of units that will be able to help out in that department as well. A new spotting pool just about to finish up. Did the Spire go down as well, by the way? I think it did. Yeah, Spire was also destroyed. Additional queens are being made, but here comes Spirit once again. I thought maybe he was going to have to defend against a counterattack, but he is feeling like he can just march across the map instead and potentially get some work done. Mia Mikado smashing his piggy bank once more, this time around spending it all on Banelinks. Excellent splits. Excellent splits right here from our Polish Terran. Not really running into a whole lot of problems. He does need to uh, run away now. Yeah, without any splash damage, it's going to be difficult to clean up that Ling Bane clump. I mean, maybe there's a chance. Okay, good targeting as well. You see that? He actually targeted with the siege tanks in the middle of the Bane Ling clump. If you don't do it manually, the siege tanks will just fire on whatever comes in sight first. But obviously, the Zerklings are very fast and they all tend to come into the uh, radius pretty quickly. But if you hit like the Zerklings that are on the site, you're gonna not maximize the splash damage, so you really want to be hitting the middle clump of that unit. That unit group. No. Well, pulling that off. Here's the second lair. There's no way. There's no way. I want to believe in the weird strategies that Mio Micah plays. But this game has been spirit from start to finish. I mean, these fights look kind of close. But that's because spirit has a ton of eco on the back of it. Like I said, he's, he's been spending uh, most of his resources right here on, on getting more economy going. I mean, he's got another base mining. <laughs> he's got another expansion up and running. Medevac drop inside of the main base, gunning down a newly made hatchery. Only 43 drones here. Here comes spirit, here comes spirit. Do, 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 do. It's ready to go again. Bullying his opponent with a medevac drop on the other side of the map. This is essentially Spirit saying, yo, just just leave, man. Just, just you know, just get out of my game. He's now more than doubling his opponent's supply. Where exactly is the Zerk army? Is there a Zerk army? <laughs> There's one Muta and 45 Zerklings. Okay, there it is. <laughs> the second game of this best of three series takes place on Pink Moon. Excellent game right there from Spirit. So here's the thing, right? I feel like that build order that Mio Micah played actually works quite well on the ladder in your average Terran versus Zork game. Or I guess from his perspective, Zork versus Terran. He would have been great against the standard Hellion Banshee aggression. He would have been great against the Battle Cruiser opener or against a Hellbat push or any of those quote unquote normal builds that we usually see coming out of Terran players. The problem is, Spirit, he obviously is familiar with Mia Micah's playstyle. 
He scouted his opponent's third base timing. If you know that your opponent is not going for a third base, or at the very least not as quickly as you normally see it, you know that he's probably gonna go for a quick lair. He can only really make one queen at once because of that, so you don't really have to worry about containing that creep that normally is one of the main things that Terran's focus on in the early game. You can just sit back. You can just do what Spirit does and... Yeah, just mech her up. Make sure you have missile turrets in time. Make sure you have units in time as well for when your opponent actually moves out into the battlefield. But you can just play your own game. And generally speaking, if you go for a faster third base, you're going to be able to outpace your opponent eventually. So anyhow, wonder what Mio Mika is going to go for right here in the second game. Double get No, okay. I thought for a second that was double gas. If you look at the minimap, it kind of looks like the spawning pool is the second gas geyser. All right. I actually, like... Little, little known secret. Ooh. All right. I'm gonna go for a very fast roach war. Interesting. Okay, so this is probably gonna be that five roach opener. Uh, normally, it's the four roaches, one ravager, but we'll see. Um, little known secret, actually. I, I cast a lot of games by staring at the minimap. I'll, I'll look at the fights, obviously, and I'll glance at the middle of... But I do usually spend a lot of time staring at the minimap. It's a nice thing, actually, of casting offline or online tournaments when there's a dedicated observer. Whenever there's a dedicated observer, I just sit back. I just stare at the screen and enjoy the pretty pictures. But when you're actually observing and casting at the same time. I think I've actually... Um, I, I used to. When you go back to my first cast that I did on YouTube. If you go back to some of the very first ones. I used to miss engagements all the time. I mean, it still happens every once in a while. But not as often as I... You know, at least used to have. Four Zerklings now, though, on the other side of the map. And Spirit not going for the early game SCV scout. Running into a little bit... Well, I mean, th there's the Reaper. He was planning on scouting with that. But he didn't send an SCV in front of it. Meaning that he doesn't really know much about the other side of the map. This is a problem. Because now with the Zerklings right here in the natural. He's been forced to send that Reaper back home as well. Meaning that he's not going to find out about those roaches. Until they're already on his side of the map. Honestly, the way that these Zerklings are controlled already yeah, is a pretty big indicator. So, is it going to be... It's going to be four roaches. That's so weird. So, normally what you do... Okay. Quote-unquote normally, right? With the five roach opener, is you go for five roaches, morph one of them into a Ravager, and then go Link Speed later on. This is Mio Mika going for a four roach opener. Which makes me think that he wants to do something with that Link Speed. That is very unlucky, by the way. You kind of need that to not hit a supply block. Really? Really? Alright. Um, well, sometimes four roaches can be enough to win the game. There's a third command center already building right here for Taran. Uh, I mean, I guess he eventually is going to be able to get a Benchy out. If he gets another minute. Imagine if there were four roaches and a Ravager at this point. Anyways, Zerklings are indeed going to be running across the map here as well. Maybe Mio Michael wasn't planning on winning this game with this push, but honestly, all of this, <laughs> all of this is pretty rough. Oh no, even the command center there gets cancelled. Spirit now hitting a massive supply block. Zerklings are going to finish up their metabolic boost upgrade as well in just a moment. Ugh, this is a bit of an ugly game, Spirit. Yeah, no. Now we're going to morph in Ravagers, and now we're just going to go for a good old Link Flood. Benchy will be out eventually. But, I mean, problem is, Spirit has been hitting supply blocks left, right, and center because of all of those lost structures. And I think that's going to be it. Oh, no. It's another one of those map names. It's just like Jaganatha all over again, or Jaganatha. I still don't know! Uh, this particular map is called... Titelica, Taitelica, Titalica, Taitalica. I don't know. All right. What does it mean? Hold up. Let me Google it real quick. Uh, it's one of the several planets in the Webtoon universe. Something about Cubera. Cubera. I don't know how to pronounce that either. Titalica is the planet on which the cataclysm began. What are we? Uh, Okay, I'm very picky when it comes to my map names, okay? <laughs> it's kind of cool, I guess. But, uh, I don't, I think it's some anime. I, I don't, I don't personally watch a lot of anime, so I, I, excuse my ignorance, okay? Jaganatha was definitely worse, though, because if you, if you Google that word, 
you'll, you'll figure out that it really does not have anything to do with, you know, nerd culture at all. Anyhow, what exactly is going to be the plan? So this is a bit of a funky map. Uh, personally, I, in my initial impressions video of the new maps that were announced, I did not really like this map myself. So, by the way, the maps that we're watching these games on, they're not necessarily new ladder and tournament maps. That is up to ESL, I guess, and Blizzard and maybe DreamHack to decide. They'll probably, yeah, collectively come up with the best maps. So, they were basically ranked amongst, uh, you know, a popularity vote, right? So, people got to vote on different maps after seeing some games on them during this map tournament and then... You know, people got, you know, the, the ranking done. Anyhow, um, I did not like this low ground section over here on this map. I think everything else was fine. So you have a normal main base and then you've got this huge area. Look at the, look at that natural. And then there's this like jump up pad over there. And then there's a couple of low mineral fields that you can mine out to go for another base. This whole layout is a little bit funky, but there's a very good chance that it's, Totally fine and not really a problem, but it just seems like a gigantic natural compared to what we normally have. And I've got a feeling that it's probably going to promote more turtley play, which I don't personally like all too much. I think uh, I think it's kind of nice whenever like you know you're you're running out of space in the main base that you actually have to expand that onto the map and put your production structures in some more risky areas. So you actually have to take some risks. But yeah. Anyways, um, Spirit this time around wisely did decide to go for a SCV Scout. SCV Scout, very nice, so you can actually figure out exactly what it is you're going up against. It's gonna go for a Reaper as well, that Reaper will see exactly what the follow-up from Eo Micah is going to be here in just a moment. And he'll see that there is a whole lot of nothing crazy. Now, you know what, maybe it's nice with the Reaper scouting path. Yeah, normally you have... no, no. Oh, you know what, good catch. Huh? Was <laughs> that little exchange was really weird. Uh, okay, I thought the Reaper was trying to deny the drone from that. This, this, this Reaper, man, I don't know. I, I think he's colluding with the Zerk. I'm not 100% sure what is going on with that Reaper. That little exchange made very little sense. Anyhow, we've got ourselves a relatively quick third base. Ish, kind of. Maybe, no, not really. Okay, so it's gonna be a single Evo chamber together with a Baneling Nest. He's been still mining a lot of gas. This makes it look to me like it's gonna be some sort of Zerkling Baneling timing attack with plus one melee or plus one armor, which could theoretically speaking work out, but the problem is that Evo chamber is gonna take forever. Okay, he goes Carapace. I mean, that's still a couple minutes. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, we don't like seeing this, Mio Micah. We like seeing this in Diamond League, okay? Not at this level of play. Like, somewhere out there, Serral is cringing really hard right now, okay? I don't know if Serral watches any of them, but, like, Serral's hurting. Seeing those, like, he's, he's all about optimizing literally everything. You having three drones on idle there for, like, 10, 15, 20 seconds? That's a little bit painful. It's obviously not the end of the world at all, but... The lack of refinement, okay? It hurts me a little bit too. So, we had the resources to go 1-1, one, one, right? We could go two upgrades, because we're sitting at 200 gas. There is a liberator, or there's a liberator too, but there's a lair coming up. This plus one armor is not going to line up with the Baneling speed. If that's the plan. You know what? I should stop trying to analyze the decision making and the strategies here, and we should just enjoy the execution, okay? Because <laughs> while I like the strategies, some of them just do not make any sense to me. I, I, may, I might be wrong. There's a good chance I'm wrong, but... I just don't see what that plus one carapace is going to achieve. Generally, when you're going Massling Bane, melee upgrade is better anyways. Oh, we're going quick hi- oh, Hydras? Hydras. Hi, baby lurkers. Um, Hydras. Gotta say, by the way, I do love the color scheme and the clarity on this map. Some maps are... Yeah, they've got these, like, weird filters. I mean, this one is also a little yellow-ish, I suppose. These units do look a little bit washed out, but... Overall, nice legibility on this map, for sure. Looks really pretty. Uh, that's probably the Liberator over here. Yeah. Funky little spot. 
<laughs> Certainly denied that base for quite some time. Zerklings over here trying their best as well, but... Spirit just flexing his APM muscles here. Hydras, though, are gonna be out in just a moment. And those Hydras are gonna be really good at... Um, um, right, what are Hydras good against? Um, they're gonna be really good at... Uh, <laughs> I want to believe. I want to believe in the Hydra. Usually, Hydras against Terran are played against Widowmine base plays. So, they can outrange Widowmines, which means that you can actually kill them, right? Against Siege Tanks, though. This is very much so a Glass Cannon, Zerkling, Baneling, Hydra composition. I guess with the plus one carapace... Nah, the plus one carapace doesn't make any sense. Like, with a strategy like that, you kind of rely on just smashing your opponent's army to bits as quickly as possible, because as long as it's a sustained fight and those siege tanks get to fire multiple times, they're gonna destroy all of your Hydra, Zerklings, and Banelings. So you kind of rely on them being dead, right? And if you can make them be dead faster, it would probably be, but we could still have, a, like we can still afford double Evo play. I think he really wanted to have the Hydras out. Okay, I think this is me on Mike uh, playing a macro game. It's a bit of a funky macro game. And I don't know if I think it's... I don't think it's the best idea against Spirit, to be honest. Like, Spirit is really a very formidable Terran player who's really good, in particular, at that macro style. I'm a little afraid that Spirit is just gonna outpace the opponent here. Like, already, look at this. 72 workers versus 51 drones. This is not really a map where you can go for an attack either, because... I mean, you could obviously try and bust through this, but there's a bunch of siege tanks waiting there. There's already a second wall being constructed over here just on the off chance that those rocks are gonna go down. This is not really a map where you can go for a mid-game timing attack, I don't think, until Terran decides to go for a command center as, like, their fourth on the low ground over here. I think that's probably my problem with this map. Not only, like, we have this section over here, which is, you know, a little funky, but it also just doesn't allow a lot of aggression. Like, you can't get in here. You can't really get in here either. I I, I don't know. Well, Mio Micah's gonna try. I don't think that's a good idea. I've got a feeling it's a really bad idea, actually. Sancho Tower here sees these units coming as well from a mile away. Pick up. Good. 2-2 two, two starts up for Terran. I've got a feeling Mio Micah could have been at 2-2 right now as well. Like, he could have already been finished with 2-2. Yeah, I just... Uh, hmm. hmm. Here's what I think is going to happen, guys. We'll see Spirit marching across the map with a massive army. And then all the Zerk units will die. <laughs> I, I think that's where we're gonna happen. This is the full-on bulldozer Terran approach over here. Couple units, I guess, harassment units have gone down, but I don't think you want to be playing into spirits. Tra oh my god, we still don't have bailing speed? Oh no, we still don't have bailing speed? I didn't even consider bailing speed. We've had that gas, all this- oh, he sees it right now, okay. Um, Ah, uh, this is not the time to go for 13 drones. It is time for the Terran to go for a move out. Now, I want to believe in this Zerg army, but I don't. Okay, maybe? Maybe? No? <laughs> Just absolutely no. But keep in mind, this is right before Spirit actually finishes up his 2-2 upgrades as well. If those upgrades would have been done, I feel like they're actually a little bit late, but... Anyways, if those upgrades would have been done, this Zerg army would have not stood a chance. I mean, it still didn't stand a chance. This base is going to be cut off. At that point, that fifth base is going to be cut off as well. Without Bailing Speed, you really can't fight Terran Bio. Ah, but Bailing Speed, that fight would have looked a whole lot better, though. Okay, fourth hatchery is gone. Got a feeling that the fifth hatchery will also fall. Maybe Spirit is overstaying his welcome a little bit, although once again, this is a bit of a desperation fight. Excellent splits right here from our Terran player. 
Yeah, this is this okay. It's a little funky, right? You can see Spirit looking at this as well. He's like, eh, Hydras? Are they good? Are they? Mm. Yeah, with the meta effects, they're actually still gonna die. Okay, just a scan over here for not a whole lot of information, but killing two hatcheries over here and now grabbing a 70 supply lead while going for a drop on the right side of the map as well. There were some cool attempts right here. Yeah, there were some cool Zerk build order ideas, but against someone of the caliber of spirit, I think they are one bridge too far. 